Hello there, this is Lynette Chandler from TechBasedMarketing.com. This video will show you two different ways how to display an RSS feed on your website or on your blog if your blog does not have a plugin already to do this. One of the simplest ways is to use FeedBurner. Now, of course, if you already have an account, uh, you simply log in. If you don't, you register. So I'm going to sign in to my account right now. And now that I'm in, I will simply go to the feed that I have burned. Now, if I have not burned a feed, all you need to do is type your the URL of your feed in here. For example, that's one of my feeds. And then you click Next and simply follow the directions. Feed burner is very, very easy to use. Once you have the feed burned like this, you see a page that's similar to this. Simply click on Publicize and on the left side you will see a link called Bus Boost. And on this page all you need to do is specify a few things like how many items that you want to display, three or five. Usually three or five is my personal preference. Anything more it seems to clutter up the space. If you want the links to open in the same or the new window and uh, any title, if you want to change the title, you can put in a new title here. Um, display the content in different methods, full text, uh, full HTML, plain text, uh, different type of uh, date formats and uh, where to put the date. If you have a podcast, you might also want to show a linked link to the podcast and you might also want to display a link to the feed and simply hit activate. Now you will be given a code that you can copy and paste onto any uh, web page. And if you have blogger or type pad, you can actually do it uh, a little bit more automated. But generally, if you have a static web page, this is the code that you want to copy and paste onto your web page. So let me paste it right here. And I'm going to view this. And there you go. Now, of course, you can uh, put this in the frame or, or put it in a column or table or whatever to change your design. That's That's for sure. And it's as simple as that. But why would you want to use something else if this is so simple? Well, for a few reasons. First thing, if you look at the code, it is JavaScript, which means that search engines will not read this and you won't really get uh, any mileage out of this content anyhow. And on top of that, if you go to the display, you will see this little guy right here. You cannot remove that. So if you have like a many different feeds that you want to display on your site and you want to put them each in a separate box and highlight each of them, every feed will have this little image here, which can get pretty distracting and can kind of clutter up your uh, website. So what alternatives are there? Well, here's one, RSS include. You can find this website by going to this URL, rss-info.com, uh, English RSS include-simple HTML. And this is a very simple uh, this is a very simple service as well. It does have a little blurb at the bottom, just like FeedBurner, but it's not an image and it's a little less intrusive. And to get started is really easy. You click on this link right there and you enter an RSS URL. Like FeedBurner, you can change the number of entries that you want to display. You can change the width of your table or your frame, change the background color or the border color, and if you want to open the links in a new pay window. 
And then it gives you three different formats, which is nice because Feedburn only gives you one, which is JavaScript. And which is and Java there's nothing wrong with JavaScript. It's common, it's easy to use, and if you just want to display it or to direct people to your forum, then this is really a good way to go. And click on create click create HTML blur. And you'll see this is a display. This is an example of how your feed looks like right now. And you simply copy and paste the code that's in this box into uh, your web page. And as you see, I've done it right here. I pasted it right there. And let's review it. There you go. And there is the little blurb. Not as intrusive again but small price to pay. Nice thing about this service is it does give you a PHP option. So if you click on PHP, select PHP and create HTML, now you'll be given a PHP code. Now, why is this desirable? Because when you use this a PHP code, and I'm assuming that you know how to display this PHP code, then uh, everything that's in then the feeds that is displayed can be read by a search engine or a robot so if it does contain and in other words it kind of adds a little bit more content to your web page so to speak but do use it wisely uh, and we don't want to spam anyone using we don't want to steal anybody's uh, content when using this format. So uh, use it wisely and it's always a good idea to get permission of the feed owner if you want to do it this way. Now if you're curious how to put a PHP, this PHP code on your web page, the first thing you need to do is your web page needs to be a dot PHP extension. It cannot be a .html. It will not work that way. Okay, so now I ha I'm in the my website source, my web editor. I simply paste the uh, PHP code in here, and as you will notice, this is a .php page, and I save it. And when I refresh this page, ta-da! There it is. It's really as simple as that. So there is a little bit of inconvenience that you have to rename your... There is a little bit of inconvenience. You do have to rename your web page. And that's all there is to it. Simple as that.